I got 53 hours, 39 minutes, and 56 seconds to preach to you. (laughs) All right. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the Lord's house, ain't it? Good to be saved, ain't it? Are you glad to be saved? Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to good to be back down to Red Lick and uh, appreciate Brother Eric calling us and, and and asking us to be a part of this revival. We was down here last year and it's in revival about this time, I think, somewhere around there. And, and we've just had a it was a blessing and we've been blessed already here tonight. Come in kindly with a burden and the burdens already begin to lift. Thank God for that. You mind the Lord tonight. Listen, at any time you want to come and pray, you're not going to hinder me. But how you hinder the service is when you don't obey the Lord. Amen? And if you'll obey God, you'll get a blessing tonight from the Lord. And I'm just going to clean a little place off here. And, and uh, maybe Brian, he'll get in and preach to us a little bit. I'm looking forward to hearing him tonight. But I've got a thought that's on my heart. If you've got a Bible and you'd like to follow with us, I know you've probably read this Scripture several times, this story several times. It's in John the eighth chapter. And I've preached this uh, several times, Brother Lee, and I, I don't know. Yesterday morning I was sitting, I drive a truck, and uh, I'm on equipment on and off all day. And uh, I was sitting I, I under the blacktop plant yesterday morning in an old truck. And by the Spirit of the Lord just came in there where I was at. And tears begin to fall. <laughs> I like it when it's that way. And I was sitting there and the Lord just spoke to me and gave me a thought. And He said, now this is what you're going to preach tomorrow night. And I said, alright Lord. And I've learned, Brother Eric, not to argue with him. He knows what he's doing. And if you'll go and you'll preach what God gives you to preach, then everything's going to be alright. Now there's somebody here tonight, and I don't know anybody's heart but mine, but somebody here tonight needs to hear this message. Amen? God's got uh, something to tell you tonight. And I just pray that it lodges in your heart and you obey the Lord. John the 8th chapter, we're going to start reading in the first verse. You hear and you love God, shall Amen. Amen. Bible said Jesus went up unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and and said, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that he they may have to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down with his finger, he rolled on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that was without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and rolled on the ground. And they which uh, heard it, began, being convicted by their own conscience, went one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Now, when you get one on one with God, things will happen. Amen. And this is what. Listen to what happened. Jesus lifted up himself, and and he saw none but the woman, and he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? And she said, No man. Lord, and he said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Now, I will preach on a thought that God placed upon my heart yesterday morning, as I said. I was sitting in an old truck. People think that God just speaks to you at church, but now, if you're a child of God, you ought to have a relationship with God. Amen. And when you pray, you'll begin to talk to God, and God will talk to you. And yesterday morning, as I was sitting in my truck now, I was sitting there around the all surrounded by everything in the world. God spoke to me about this Scripture and I, and He put a thought on my heart. And I want to preach on this thought tonight. If we could, if it be the Lord's will, on when justice called and mercy answered. When justice called and mercy answered. Now, by what these Pharisees and scribes were uh, telling the Lord, they, they said, and according to the law that Moses said, this woman is to be stoned for what she has been called in the act 
act of doing. Uh, she is to be put to death for the sin that she has committed. Amen. How many knows that sin bringeth forth death? Amen. Uh, you want to know what the number one cause of death is in this land? It's not heart disease. It's not cancer. Uh, it's not diabetes. It's sin. Amen. It's what's causing what you see around you. It's the reason that uh, the United States of America has gotten the shape that it's in. It is because that man has turned away from God and the Word of God and has turned to sin. Amen. Uh, what destroyed Adam and Eve in the garden is destroying us tonight. Amen. Uh, but friend, I'll tell you something. Uh, when they brought this little woman to uh, where that Jesus was at, Brother Brian, uh, I can imagine the look that was on her face as she knew that uh, she had been called in a deadly sin. Uh, I believe she knew that uh, they had every right to put her to death and to take her life. Uh, uh, but when she got to where Jesus had, uh, I ain't a doubt in my mind that uh, uh, the devil had done told her today you're going to die uh, and today you're going to lift your eyes in hell uh, uh, because what you have done. Amen. Uh, but there was a man there that day uh, that looked past what she had done uh, and looked at what she had needed. Amen. Uh, now friend, I come here tonight uh, uh, to preach to you uh, uh, that God's looking past what you've done uh, and He's looking at what you need. Amen. Uh, and if you're here and you don't know the Lord in a free part of sin. I'll tell you what you need. You need the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your soul. And friend, when you get that blood applied, you'll not have to guess where you've been. You'll not have to ask somebody what happened. Because when you meet the Master, amen, you'll know who it is that you had contact with. I ain't never been nobody that's ever went and had contact with the Lord that had to ask, who was that man? Uh, that I just talked to. Uh, who was that that touched me? Uh, uh, brother, when the Lord comes by, uh, uh, you know who it is that comes by, amen. Uh, but friend, she had in her mind, uh, I'm aimed to die, Brian. Uh, uh, this is my day of death. Uh, and justice would have been uh, for her to die. Uh, uh, but when justice called, amen, uh, uh, mercy answered, uh, uh, well, I'm glad, amen, uh, that grace and truth uh, came by Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm glad that the law was by my Moses, uh, but the Bible said grace. Uh, I came through and by uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, what is grace? Uh, uh, grace is unmerited favor. Uh, it's something you can't earn. Uh, it's something you can't buy. Uh, it's something that God gives. Amen. Uh, and friend, I tell you something tonight. Uh, if you make it to heaven, uh, it won't be because of what you done. Uh, it'll be because of what Jesus done. Uh, when He went to Calvary, uh, when the blood was spilled, uh, when it's applied to your soul, uh, that's what the mercy of God is all about. Amen. Because if we'd have got what we would have deserved, we'd be lifting our eyes in hell right now. But Jesus came and Jesus went to Calvary and Jesus died. I sought you and I. I will not have to lift our eyes in hell. But so you and I. I could go to a better land. A place, brother, where milk and honey is flowing. A place where it won't be any more death. A place where there'll not be any sickness. Amen. I'm glad tonight for the mercy of God. You say, preacher, I don't know nothing about it. If you're here, you're living and breathing. You've experienced the mercy of God. Because without the mercy of God, you do not got in your car. You do not got to this church. You do not got out of the bed. It's by the mercies of God that we're not consumed. It's by the mercy of God, uh, that we're alive and well. Uh, I tell you tonight, uh, I'm glad that when justice called uh, uh, for me one day, uh, uh, when I was lost and undone, uh, uh, when I was doomed for hell, uh, I'm glad I turned to the Lord, amen. Uh, and when justice called, uh, uh, mercy answered for me. I'm glad of that. I'm glad of mercy. A lot of people leaves it out. Amen. They don't never leave grace out of the message of God. Don't never leave mercy out of the message of God. Because that's what God's all about. Amen. Because listen, He's got every right to come right now and say, church, come on up. Amen. He's got every right right now 
to split the eastern sky and say, I'm taking my bride home. I'm ready for them to come. Amen. Uh, do you realize that you're here tonight? And if you're lost and you hear the voice of God uh, that's speaking to you, that's dealing with you right now, uh, do you know you realize it's because somebody prayed for you somewhere or another? Uh, we're everyone sitting in this church tonight uh, because somebody prayed for us. Amen. If it had not been the Bible, I believe what the Bible says about prayer. Amen. It says the prayer of a righteous man is still availeth much. Amen. Our brother Hannah went in and prayed before the Lord and asked God to give her a child. And when God gave her a child, Amen, she took that child and gave back to God. I'm telling you, it's time we start giving back to God what belongs to God. Amen. And let God start blessing where God wants to bless. Because tonight, church, if we want to do the will of God, if we want to do the work of God, we don't need to put out to tomorrow what needs done tonight. If something needs fixed up in your life, you better hit your knees tonight while mercy is answering for you. Amen. Amen. Listen, you go through this whole Bible. Now, I'm not going to preach long because I want to hear this preacher preach. Amen. I'm going to preach what God put upon my heart and I'm going to get out of the way. But I want to tell you something tonight. You go all the way back into the Garden of Eden and you read about Adam and Eve, bless God, and you see God had every right to stamp their existence out right there. He could have done away with Adam and we wouldn't have been in this place tonight. But God had mercy upon Adam, amen. And God had mercy upon Eve and saved her in childbirth. Our God could have went out and stamped Noah out with the rest of this world when He went to Noah and told him it's going to start raining on this earth. Our God could have stamped this out. I could have done away with Noah just like He did everybody else. But the Bible said that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm glad. About ten years ago, boys, I was in a church house lost as a ball and high weeds one morning and the mercy of God called to me and I found grace in the eyes of the Lord are the same way no did. I bear I tell you, I didn't have to get up and build a heart. I didn't have to get up and do this. I call Jesus done the work on Calvary, amen. All I have to do is believe and receive what God was willing to give me. If you believe God tonight, how you get the mercy of God? I brother, I'd rather have the mercy of God. I'll in the face of judgment of God and lift my eyes in hell. I'm a call that in Listen, amen. Amen. Now, some of his done went colder than a tater. Amen. Bless God. Let me tell you something tonight. The Bible said that God told Noah, you go out and you build that ark. If Noah had built it his way, it wouldn't have floated. Amen. If God would have put one more curve, Noah would have put one more critter on our earth than what he's supposed to have, he wouldn't have floated. He had to do it to God's plan. Let me tell you something right here is the plan of God. Amen, church. When we get away from it, and we start going after everything in the world, buddy, we ain't doing nothing. Amen. But brother right here has wrote the words of life. Amen. In this Word, there's promises, there's blessings, and there's cursings. And friend, I found in this Bible, it was wrote to me, if I believed God, I'd find the mercy of God in my life. I, brother, I don't know nothing else to believe in. I, but Jesus, I, He's the only one God that's living tonight. Do you realize that? I, there's a place over there I, where there's a body of a Buddha that's laying. There's a place over there where all these idle things are buried. I, but there's also a place where there's an empty tomb and where there's a risen Savior that's seated at the right hand of the Father that's making intercession for you and I, man. And I'll tell you tonight that when justice calls for you, if you listen to Jesus, I'm not praying He'll be at the right hand of His Father. I'm making intercession for you. I'm calling out. I'm saying, come, amen. I come and drink of the water of the fountain of life. I freely tonight. And if you receive that, you'll never regret it, amen. I'm glad that I know what I done that morning when I stepped out and received Jesus in my life. 
I could have been like this woman. Listen, Eric told you we ain't proud of what we've done. But I'm proud of where we're at now. I ain't proud of a lot. I love my children. I'm proud of my children. My oldest one, he's already found the Lord as his Savior. Praise God for that. Amen. I'm proud of my kids. My kids ain't ashamed. I got eight year olds already started praying. He'll come up to the altar. You can't don't never turn them away from praying, amen. People tell me they don't know what they're doing. Jesus said, Seek you as I first the kingdom of heaven, all these things will be added unto you. You gotta enter in as a little child, amen. amen. You gotta be humble as a little these children know what they're doing. I believe that, brother. They know what they're after. They know today, I brother, that there's a God in heaven, pure in heart, amen. And the Bible said the pure in heart to see God. I want you to know something tonight. I was like this woman. I was brought to the judgment table. And friend, I tell you, I might not have committed adultery, but I had sin in my life. I just like she had sin in her life. And friend, it was justice that was waiting on her. I bet that I came to a place where Jesus stood in between. I want you to know something tonight. In the book of Second Timothy, the Bible tells us that there is one God and one mediator between God and man of the man Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm glad for the middle man of the one that stood in and pleaded my cause. Because, friend, when I deserved justice, when I deserved death, when punishment was headed my way, just as He didn't pick up a rock and throw it at that little woman, He didn't pick up a rock and throw it at me either. But He opened His arms up. I thank God for every act for the little scarred hands of Jesus. And will open up, amen, and say, come unto me, whosoever will. I let him come, amen. I was I tell you something tonight. I when you fall into the arms of Jesus, you know who it is, his arms you're in. Amen. Justice called and mercy answered. And he looked at her and I'd like to see their expression on their face. When he got down and started doing this. They just writing on the ground, Eric. They asked him, said, Now Master, what do you say to do? They know that man, they wouldn't have called him Master. They know they something different about that man. Amen. And he said, Let the one without sin, let him cast the first stone at him. Let him pick it up and throw it. Can I tell you, church, ain't a person in here had a right to throw a rock. Starting with me. Amen. Hey, ain't every one of us could have picked up a rock and thought it at her. Amen. We was in the same shape as she was in. And justice was waiting for her. But when Jesus told them that, they started at the oldest and they went to the youngest and they left him and her alone. And brother, as I said a minute ago, when it's just you and God in the midst, good things will happen. Amen. And brother, when she got with just her and God in the midst, I, the Lord told her, I said, woman, where's thou the accusers? I just no man accuse thee. I she said, no man, Lord. I now here you are sitting in this church tonight and God is dealing with you and God is speaking to you and brother, it's you and Him, amen. Or sister, it's you and Him. And what are you going to do with this man? That's called Jesus. Are you going to turn him away and go back to the accuser? I can I tell you the devil's an accuser? I can I tell you how the devil's a liar and the father of it? I can I tell you that the devil's out to kill, or to steal and destroy, or that He wants nothing more but death for you, and for you to lift your eyes in a place called hell. That's what He wants. But when you get in the presence of Jesus and the Spirit of God, my friend, good things can happen. And when you say, no man, Lord, I'm coming to you, Lord, I'll tell you what will happen. You'll get saved by the grace of God, and you'll never forget it. Amen. The Bible said, and I'm going to read this, and I don't know, Eric, if you want to give an invitation or what, but I want to read you this Scripture out of Romans, the ninth chapter. Now, the Bible said, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I'm glad He knocked at my door one day. Lee Gad, I'm glad He locked at my door one day. Oh, mercy. You're talking about a friend. 
I ain't never had a friend like him. I've got some awful good friends sitting in this church tonight. Hey, some of us boys has been through thick and thin. Yep. But Eric, we ain't got no friend like Jesus in our life. Oh, praise His name. I can go home tonight and I can lay down in my little old bed. Yep. I can lay down in my bed. Yes. I can call out on my Lord. Amen. Now I know who it is that's on the other end that's talking Amen. to me, brother. Whoa, thank God. I know who it is tonight, boys, that's on the other side, that hears my prayers and knows my needs. Before I ever ask Him, I can I tell you tonight, I'm glad when justice was waiting on me, that mercy answered for me one day, and I bowed down and said, God, come in. And when God come in, I have never been the same, and you have neither. Amen. The Bible said in Romans, the ninth chapter, 15th and 16th verse, for He said to Moses, I'll have mercy on whom I'll have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. And that's God's right. Amen. So then it is not of Him that willeth, nor of Him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. I'm glad when justice called for me one day that mercy answered in my place. Friend, in the book of Revelations, you'll read in there where John the Revelator said that they looked through the heaven, they looked under the heaven, they looked through the earth, they looked under the earth for somebody worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof. And John said, I, John, wept much because no man was found worthy to open that book, Brother Eric, and loose them seals. No man was worthy. And one of the elders looked at me and said, Weep not, I for the line of the tribe of Judah, amen, has prevailed. And he has loosed these seals. He has opened this book. I cannot tell you something tonight. I believe it when John saw him, he saw a bloody lamb that was standing at the mercy seat of God. It was there to make sacrifice for our sin, amen. I to put the blood in the place where it would cleanse us from all spot. I thank God for mercy. that's mercy tonight. Jesus didn't have to do that. He didn't have to go, but he stood in our place and church tonight. Don't never forget, you're here by the mercy of God, amen. We're here by the mercy of God. God died in our place. Oh, on the day of the feast, a favor was given. One man must die, and one could keep living. And then Pilate asked the question, which one would it be? Uh-huh, yeah. Brabus said they called out my name yeah. so I could go free. I am a Rabbis. <laughs> He died in my place. I'm guilty of sin. Yet covered by grace. I'm nothing to bargain. I'm nothing to give. I am Barabbas. Yet I can live. Oh, friend, you know Barabbas had a man die in his place. Just like tonight, church, as we stand to our feet, there's somebody here that died in our place. And his name's Jesus. It wasn't Barabbas, it was Jesus. Amen. Whoa! Can I tell you tonight that today is a day of salvation. Harden not your heart as He knocks upon your heart's door. Do not turn Him away. But as justice calls out, I tell you what, I didn't do nothing to deserve the goodness of God. I've got a good shirt on my back. My shoes are not wore out. I've got a good place to go lay down tonight. I've had food on my table. I'm blessed of God. Amen. And you are too. I, but I can I tell you something tonight? I, we don't deserve what God has given us, I, but God has given it to us anyway I, because of His mercy. And tonight, if you're here and you're lost, I have somebody here praying for you. They want to see you saved by the grace of God. They want to see you brought out of sin. They want to see you changed, amen. And you can have that tonight if you'll just step out and come. Yeah. If you'll just step out and come. As they sing us a song, Long as elders open church, if you need to pray, come on and pray. You just do as God tells you to tonight.
Yes, mind the Lord. We're on God's time tonight. You mind Him. God bless. Thank you, Jesus. God bless my brother tonight as he prays. And touch him, Lord. Thank you, God, for your mercy and grace. Oh, God, thank you for Jesus and Calvary. God bless him tonight. Thank you, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Tonight they're praying.